Hey everybody, this is Brian for work to game Today we're talking about the Diadem 2.0, how to get in it, what to expect. Not a real full comprehensive guide, but hopefully enough tips and tricks to get you started. So how to enter the Diadem? If your free company doesn't have an airship, the easiest way is to do so from Ishgard. Travel to Foundation, and then to the Astrologian Guild, and from there, go to the airship dock. On the screen you'll see the Quartermaster, who you can buy the vouchers that will allow you to queue up into the Diadem. From my experience, everybody in the party needs to have at least one. They're not that expensive, I would recommend at least buying a stack of them for multiple runs. With that in mind, talk to the Mission Commander and queue up. If you've done the Diadem before, you'll notice some changes, but pretty much you have two options. Trials of the Fury and Trials of the Matron. Fury is going to be your battle objectives and Matron is going to be your gathering objective. For Fury, you're going to need one tank, two healers, and five DPS. This really does kind of feel like an eight-man dungeon in a large open zone, and it's a lot of fun. The rewards and the loot that you can get are quite substantial. It combines a little bit of what we've seen with Palace of the Dead, which adds a fun little bit of randomness to it. So this is how it's going to really work. You're going to zone in, and you're going to get objectives along the way. All in all, your team is being evaluated for what they do. This is a very large area, and it can be very easy to get lost. I'd recommend if ever getting separated, using control right click or L1 and R1 together to mark the map with a flag so that everybody can group up. You have three main objectives, and those objectives are gonna show up on the map as a quest. Completing these objectives will allow you to have access to the area below in which some of the biggest bosses spawn. These big bosses are gonna give you the opportunity for the best loot possible. There's also a system called Emergency Mission that has the chance to spawn. It doesn't mean it's going to, and we'll cover a little bit more of that here in a minute. One thing you might want to keep an eye out is for any buried coffers. Treasure chests of bearing bronze, silver, and gold are going to reward you with a lot of drops. If you go in with the match party, you're going to be able to have, your only option will be greed. If you go in with an eight-man pre-made, you can set your own loot rule. So completing any objective is the main goal. Between each objective, because they're not going to give you all of them right away, it's best to focus in on fates. This is where the real challenge comes in in trying to keep the group together and focusing in on the same fate. I've done this a couple of times. The first time it was rather difficult because everybody was new and trying to figure out what we were supposed to be doing. I think as we do this content more and more, it's going to become a lot easier to keep everybody together. But use the control click or the L1, R1 buttons together to mark the flag on the map if you want to go to any particular fate. Now, once you've completed all of your objectives, you can now access the ethereal gaps, which will take you into the various islands that are below. You cannot fly in these zones and you cannot get to them without going to these gaps. You also have to use the wind currents to go back up. This is where harder fates are gonna spawn, which are gonna give better rewards, as well as boss fates have the opportunity to spawn. The number next to the name is going to indicate the strength of the various mob that you're attacking with the star being the highest that I've seen in any particular fate so far. So be sure to keep an eye out for any boss fate that spawns. So the NMs will show up on your map just like any other fate, gather together and engage the target and enjoy the loot. These can also be very challenging, so just keep in mind that it's important to, to at least be paying attention. Whether you do so in Eshgard, you can always take your lock boxes to the NPC Picker of Locks. It's going to tell you how many lockboxes is needed for an attempt and how many you have. Doing so can reward you with 265 gear, which is going to have various random stats on it. The appraisal method is very similar to that of the Palace of the Dead. Now, if you're lucky and you happen to get an emergency mission, here's some general tips that we found that seem to be helpful. You want to clear out the middle. You always want to protect the middle so tanks don't tank in the middle. You always want to kill elemental adds that spawn. You want to clear out any side bosses and kill the crystals. I'm sure that there's going to be more that we're going to learn or be able to share with you the more we get to experience it. But having not experienced it, we're going off of various strategies that we found shared on Reddit. So thanks to the community for posting that information. Now, all you need to do to finish out your time, you can wait till the time expires or you can always go to duty and leave duty. In this case, you won't have to you will not suffer a penalty when leaving after the objectives have been completed. The other fun thing is you can also change your job while in here. 
So if you've completed it and you want to gather, or if you want to go and if your tank leaves and you want to keep playing with the group that you've got, you can always change your job and continue on. Well, that pretty much does it for me. This is Brian for work to game I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has been a helpful introduction to the diadem, what let's call it 2.0. Let me know in the comments down below if you've got any tips, strategies, or if there's anything I failed to mention. I'd like to do a more comprehensive guide on this system at a later date after having spent more time with it. But for those of you who are out there who are curious and want to know what they're getting into, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing I would say that it requires is a good leader trying to keep the party organized on going to the correct fate. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of the diadem. Let me know if you like it, if you don't or if those I-280 weapons are just too powerful. This is Work to Game. My name's Brian. Thanks for watching this video. I hope to see you in my next one, but until then, take care. Hey, it's me. Thanks so much for watching this video. You should click here to subscribe and here to maybe check out some more of our videos. So again, thanks for watching. We hope you like this video. We hope you subscribe and join our community. Let us know in the comments below what you think. And we'll see you next time. Bye.